I was deeply shocked that um, he was doing things online that was harming children and there was no indication and yeah, that that was not even in my reality of something that I would consider. Frequently for partners of someone who has demonstrated pedophilic behaviour, they don't know. There's no script for what you do in such a situation. No one, no one imagines that that's going to happen to them. Hello, I'm Gary Jubelin, former New South Wales detective, and I'm here with Madeline West. We're talking about a podcast series called Predatory. We're uncovering a world that's not often spoken about, the world of predators, pedophiles, people who sexually abuse children. We've recently had a guest on the podcast who has spoken about uh, relationships or being in a relationship with a pedophile and the impact that that has. And I found that fascinating. Madeline. Absolutely. It's such a controversial, such a stigmatised notion because often there is a mistake that, well, it's what we hear all the time. How did you not know? How could you not know that yeah. this is what he was doing or this is what she was doing? But frequently for partners of someone who has demonstrated pedophilic behaviour, they don't know. Sometimes, yes, they do. Well, this, this poor, poor lady, and it came as a shock to her, was when her granddaughter told her that the person that she was yeah. told married her mother, to... Told her mother that this is what granddad's doing. Yeah. And it, it had started in the child displaying certain behaviours, which suggested there was something untowards happening. And she revealed, yes, someone has been touching me, it's granddad. And for this particular woman, she said she felt very conf con confronted because from the outside view, there would be a sense that, well, surely he was not normal with you sexually. Something mm. in his behaviour must have been a giveaway. She said, no, not at all. That was not the case at all. It was only that she received, when she received confirmation that this is what was happening to her grandchild, mm. that she thought backwards and went, OK, there were some red flags. But for all extensive purposes, I would have never known. I instantly knew it was true. And I also, I mean, obviously now with the benefit of hindsight, I can see how I was being groomed as well. And how things that hadn't seemed quite right to me in some strange back corner of my brain, I had been persuaded that that was my imagination. This is what makes predators so dangerous is that they are so good at hiding in plain sight. They're so good at grooming not just their victims, but everyone around that child, everyone around them themselves, their own spouses, yeah. to get away with what they're doing. Well, that's the skill they have, to allow them to be trusted with children. You'd leave someone with a child because, oh, he's fine. Absolutely. We, we can trust this person. So that's why uh, people have got to understand that they're not these evil people. You can't yeah. tell a pedophile just by looking at the person. No, absolutely not. And that's what makes this interview so fascinating and so, I hate using that word, it's not correct, but so illuminating, just giving people a sense of what some of the tiny little nuanced details are that can give someone away. Because the fact is it's really hard to detect pedophiles and all we can do is deflect them to keep our kids safe. Exactly. We've got another uh, interesting guest that we're going to hear from now, Natalie Walker, mm. uh, founder of Partner Speak, which is trying to help people that find themselves in a relationship or, or tied up with uh, people that are uh, sexually abusing children. Absolutely. Help them find a voice so they don't feel ashamed about speaking out because, in a sense, they are as much a victim of these behaviours as the survivors themselves, on a different level certainly, but they are part of the puzzle. And having them speak out and speak about their experience is a really important educational tool for society at large to help stop these predators in yeah. their track, tracks I, and I, keep kids safe. I think it's so important that people are speaking out. So let's hear from Natalie now. It was nearly 20 years ago now, and um, the weekend I found out we were hosting some of his friends over the weekend and one of his friends had serviced our computer for a really long time. And this time when they arrived to stay with us, that friend in particular took me aside and said, look, we all know there's always been a lot of porn on his computer, but this time I found something different. It's children. Um, and that's how I found out. It's weird um, 
sometimes I think about what's the difference between surprised and shocked. And I think perhaps I wasn't 100% surprised because he had hidden a lot of adult pornography. There had been things where I found him communicating with other women and hiding that from me. So I wasn't surprised he was doing things online that I was unaware of, but I was deeply shocked that um, he was doing things online that was harming children and there was no indication and yeah that that was not even in my reality of something that I would consider. I think I went into shock because I had this group of friends descend on our home for the weekend and so it was it was very public um, and there's no script for what you do in such a situation no one no one imagines that that's going to happen to them. Um, and so I didn't say anything for the weekend and I waited for them to go home. And then I confronted him on Monday, um, which led to us separating. So I remember the very last conversation I had with him face to face. And this is the only part in a really distressing saga that um, still makes me smile. Um, we went out for coffee and there were two items on my agenda for our meeting and they were, I let him know that I would be telling his new partner um, about why we had separated and what I believed the risks were um, to her future children and, and to the community at large. And I also let him know that I had um, founded Partner Speak and that Partner Speak was specifically for people who had this lived experience and it was based on what I had gone through with him. And um, because he'd known me all that time, he just said, that's not very surprising, Natalie. Um, and so it, it didn't surprise him that I would draw on that trauma that I had and turn it into advocacy. Um, because when I had that experience, there, was, there wasn't language for what I was going through. We have a language for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault due to the advocacy of predominantly women decades ago. But for this experience, there wasn't even a, a language. And so where did I start to go to look for help? A friend of mine ran an online support forum um, in regards to another issue. And she helped me get the first iteration of the Partner Speak Online peer support up online in the next couple of days. And we've always had some iteration of that forum since 2004 to today. And so on that forum, people came and shared their stories and said, this is what's happening to me. Has anyone else been through this? What should I do? What should you do? And that was how the first grassroots iteration of Partner Speak was born. Devastatingly, since Partner Speak started in 2004, there has been a 15,000% increase in um, child abuse material offending online. And so in Australia, that means last year, there were 33,000 actionable reports to the Australian Centre to counter child exploitation. And of all those reports, over half of those perpetrators um, have children and up to three quarters have an intimate, intimate partner. And so as this crime type is exploding, um, that means there's thousands of um, family members, innocent family members who had no idea in trauma um, who need support. So at the moment, um, Partner Speaks delivering a national pilot, which is the first time that we've had support for families outside of Victoria. And um, we're delivering training to law enforcement in every state because often the point of discovery for the non-offending partner is um, the knock at the door from police. And so often law enforcement, as well as doing their core job of disrupting child sexual abuse, they're also delivering news to an, an unsuspecting family, mm -hmm. um, which is a really tricky thing to do on top of everything else. Um, and as part of that national pilot, it's the first time that Partner Speak's been able to take calls um, from all states of Australia. And what's really powerful about our peer line, which is what we call our helpline, is that when there is that knock at the door, 
most people, every nobody has thought about being the partner of someone who offends against children. When we read about this offence, obviously the focus is all on perpetrators. And so when there's that knock at the door, the non-offending partner feels like the only person in the world that this has ever happened to. And then if they're connected with Partner Speak and our peer line, Hopefully the very next person they speak to, the person who answers the phone, is someone who's been through a similar experience and then has been trained in peer support. And so that's what we're currently able to offer around Australia. That was really interesting what Natalie had to say. And really hard to listen to and yeah. um, gives you a real sense of how hard it would be, the degree of shame that someone has, in a sense, been guilty by association. Yeah. Yep. when it's not their fault, again. Well, again, it's like the actual victim. There's no shame if you didn't know. Absolutely. It... But if you have a sense, you have an obligation yeah. to step forward. Exactly. You have an absolute ob obligation to step forward. And again, it demonstrates that these predators are not the strangers loitering, looking strange in a trench coat on the other side of the playground. They're people in your neighbourhood, yeah. in your immediate social network, maybe even in your own home. The good thing about Natalie talking about it is she's coming out and using her experiences through Partner Speak to help others that Absolutely. have found themselves in the same situation.